guys up, please? So welcome everyone from Common. I hope you brought your friends and family and instructors. Everybody's welcome. Um, this is being streamed live. So I want to get house lights up because I want the panelists to meet you and you to meet the panelists. So can we throw up some house lights, please? All right, all the way up to the back. Okay, cool, cool. So you can see each other, right? So this is Calm Careers and You. John Scott organized this. We have an excellent set of panelists, and some of them are graduates. This um, video from iPhone was made by Jason Yee. He is a graduate of our department. He, was, he got his master's degree from us. Uh, he started out as a stockbroker in life, and then he said, you know, I really want to do video. I really want to work in editing and cre be creative. And he got a job at Apple. And he's making zillions of money, and we want him to adopt us. So here we have fabulous panelists. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to introduce you to the panelists. And of course, we have some grads. And it's all about you and jobs. Because one day, we want you all to have fabulous jobs, make a lot of money, give back to the community, and of course, adopt us. So that's what we want to do. Then we're going to open up for questions and answers. You get to ask the panelists any question you would like. And that's how we're going to work. So this is the order we're going to do. And I want you all to welcome them. Strong applause, please. Um, in order, they're sitting, sitting in order. First, on my far right, Melissa Suzuno. Thank you. Just let me tell you a little bit about her. She's a content marketing manager at After College. Now, this is a career network for college students and recent grads. And Melissa and her team, they work to get you jobs, basically. She wants you to have jobs. And, you know, their internships explore how to help you. And they want you to answer three easy questions. What did you study? Where did you study? And what do you want to do when you graduate? And she would tell us that they have 400 thousand entry-level jobs and internships from 25,000 employers from around the world. So we'll hear first from Melissa, then we're going to go to David Pham. No, I'm sorry, then we're going to go to Nathan Parcells. Next giveaway, Nathan. Welcome him, please. So Nathan, young guy that he is, he is the founder of Intern Match. They place amazing students just like you with internships. And of course, we know that internships can lead to jobs. So Nathan founded Intern Match. He's got a few PowerPoint slides to share with us. And they've built a library of resources and tools dedicated to helping you get matched up with the right employer for an internship. Hopefully, that internship will lead to a job for you. So um, Nathan will be second and third. Of course, how many of you are on Facebook, Facebook, Facebook? David Pham is a designer at Facebook. Give him a welcome. Here's David. As we know, it is the world's largest social media network, over 1 billion active user accounts. And David um, helps Facebook with its look and feel for users, that would be us, marketing and communications, and of course, a global business marketing. And the good news is, David, you're a graduate of the advertising department here at AAU. <laughs> Woohoo! Now, speaking of graduates, and rounding out our panelists, you're going to meet two recent grads. Maybe you know some of them. Julie, you know Candace, you may know some of them. But Candace was in our graduate department. And Can Candace, right here, give a wave, give a wave. <laughs> she got a master's degree from us. And um, she is now, we love this because I saw her at her job at Carol Wen TV. And she is the web producer at Carol on Television here in San Francisco. And the, the Fascinating thing when you and I met at Cron. I mean, I saw you working where you were working, and you said, you know, Jan, I never started out to do this. 
uh, but here she is. So she'll tell you her journey and where she is. And last, Julia Frazier. <laughs> Juju, Juju. Juju. Julia was a basketball athlete here at the Academy of Art University. She was in our department, and she graduated. And uh, she was one of my judges on Academy Idol, and she was really active. And, and she found herself and her calling with radio. Yes. And right now, Julia is the show producer and board operator with Alice at 97.3 Radio right here in San Francisco. So we're really proud of everybody and our two graduates. So give everybody a fabulous round of applause. And we're going to start off first. Melissa, you're going to start us off. So take it away. OK. You guys can hear me OK? All right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so um, my name is Melissa Susano. I work for a company called After College. I am the content marketing manager there. Um, and what exactly does that mean? Uh, basically, I oversee our blogs. We have uh, two blogs. One is student-facing. The other one is employer-facing. And I'll talk a little bit more about exactly what we cover in the student-facing blog in the very near future. Um, I also want to call out and embarrass my coworker, Kellen McKillop, who's here with me. Kellen, can you uh, raise your hand? So there she's over there. Yeah, thank you for coming to support me. Um, and Kellen helps out with a lot of the content for our blog as well. So when you come and visit blog.aftercollege.com, then you'll see a lot of the great articles that Kellen is writing for us. So um, I want to start off by um, saying, okay, so the internship or job search might have you down, and we understand, but after college can help. So let's talk about some of the ways that we might be able to help you. <clears throat> I'd like to start by introducing you to Janice. Um, Janice is a current student here at the Academy of Art. Uh, okay, not really. <laughs> uh, she's actually a character from a movie that you may be familiar with called Mean Girls. Um, but let's just pretend for a moment that she is a student here. And um, she's a junior communications major, and she does not know what she wants to be when she grows up. Does that sound familiar? Maybe. <laughs> um, so that's okay, because there are a lot of students out there like Janice. And um, the, the internship and job search can be really hard, and we understand that. Um, I asked a few of the former interns at After College to uh, kind of summarize how they felt about the internship and job search, and this is what they had to say. Uh, one of them wrote, when I'm completely honest with myself, which is a terrifying thing to be, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So far, I've been applying to jobs in my field, but I have yet to be hired. Am I purposefully sabotaging myself? I can't really picture what the rest of my life will look like. And my major was so broad, I don't even think I'm actually qualified for any of the jobs I'm applying to. And another intern wrote, I know that I've worked hard and achieved a lot. The thing is, I'm not convinced that anyone cares. Of course, I think I'm awesome. It's not like I have low self-esteem or anything. I know that I could contribute to a team of awesome, motivated people. It's just that so can a lot of people. When we're all trying to stand out, don't we all kind of get lost in the crowd? So I think that both of these comments uh, kind of uh, cover three main issues that a lot of college students and recent grads face. One is not knowing what you want. Um, another is not knowing what you could do, what your skills and your major would lead you to do. And another is, yeah, uh, just not really understanding what you have to offer. So that's where after college comes in. Um, we understand that for a lot of students, when they go about the job or internship search, um, it's really intimidating to be confronted by the empty search box that you see on Google, right? What do you put in there? If you don't know what you want to be, and you don't know what jobs you could do, what do you put in there? Um, a lot of students that use our service would put in things like, you know, multimedia communications major job, right? Or history major job, or history major internship. And, um, you know, you don't necessarily find the best results that way. So what we did on after college is we eliminated the search box. So if you can see here, this is our top page. Um, all we ask you to do is answer three questions that should hopefully be easy for you to answer. We just want to know your college, your major, and your graduation date. That's it. Okay? 
Um, and once you fill out that information, um, you will get a list of job titles, uh, job uh, industries, and uh, locations. Sorry, job categories, job titles, and locations. And um, we ask you, it, we, basically this works a lot like Netflix. So if anyone here has used Netflix before, when you first go on, it'll give you kind of a random selection of movies that are popular. And then once you start to watch things and start to use the service, um, and, and you can also give feedback on things, right, as time goes by, hopefully, you know, some of those random suggestions that come up will be eliminated and you'll start to get results that are actually meaningful to you. And that's how it works on After College as well. We'll give you some material, some suggestions, based on all of the data that we have. We've been around for 14 years. So we have a lot of information about all of the students that have used our site in the past and what kinds of jobs and internships they've gone on to apply for and accept. Um, and then also you get to give feedback. So um, if you like something, you tell us you like it and we'll show you more things that are like it. If you don't like something, then you tell us that you don't and then we will not show you things like that in the future. Um, we also offer, in addition to all of the jobs and internships that we have listed on our site, um, we have a lot of other cool features that you'll find. And um, I forgot to mention that this is all called Explore. So when you first sign in to After College and then you see this list of um, suggested jobs and internships, that's using the Explore feature. And then we also, in addition to showing you that, we have some other cool things. So one is scholarships and events. So I have to um, make sure to mention we have scholarships that we offer every quarter, and there is one scholarship deadline that's coming up December 31st, so definitely be sure to check that out. Um, it's a really easy application process, and we have scholarships that are available for a number of different majors, so definitely be sure to check that out. Um, and then the events listings are basically um, about when there are employers that want to hire you, and you know they'll know wh where you go to school and what your major is, so um, the information that you find on there will be targeted towards you. Um, and so if they're giving an information session or if they're going to be doing on-campus interviews or any of that kind of thing, that'll show up on your Explore feed as well. Um, and then we also have um, the Job Search Survival Kit. So that is intended to guide you through your senior year. Um, the idea is that it can be really intimidating to approach your job search. Um, but if you just take it one little bite-sized piece at a time, um, so every week we just give you one little thing to work on, and then the idea is by the end of your senior year, you should be all set for, with the job search. And then finally, we have um, the blog posts. And um, you'll see on the Explore feed uh, blog posts that will be um, tailored to your major and your specific uh, class year and other things in you that you've given us, any other background information you've given us. But if you actually go to the blog itself, then you can see all of the content. And so um, here are just a couple of examples of some of the recent blog posts that we've written. So we have um, something about like some of the unexpected things that you'll have to deal with when you're a grown-up. So, you know, how do you handle taxes and how do you handle your 401k? What does that even mean? All of that kind of fun stuff. Then we also have, um, you know, working at a hotel. What's it like to be a front desk clerk at a hotel and why is, what might that be a job option for you and what kind of major might end up in that field? And then um, the last one, the drama one, is really fun. Um, I interviewed someone who was passionate about theater, and she grew up in Florida, but then she was able to get to New York. She studied at NYU, and then she has become a theater historian and written several books about the untold stories of Broadway. And that's also very cool. She interviews all sorts of people who are involved in theater, and you know, from people who are the wig designers to the people who work at the door, and she uncovers a lot of really cool stories about Broadway that most people don't know. So definitely check out uh, blog.aftercollege.com. And then um, going back to your Explore feed, I just want to take you through really quickly. Um, you'll see um, a list of job categories and job titles. And as I was going through, I, I said that I was a communications major here at the Academy of Art University, and I saw a really cool job pop up. Uh, it suggested that um, I might like to work as a beer buyer and specialist, and I thought, hmm, that, might, that actually sounds kind of cool. So you can see um, in the lower part of the page, I gave it positive feedback. I clicked on the smiley face to say that I really like that job and I definitely want to see more like it. So that's how our system works. It's really simple, really easy to give feedback. And the more feedback you give, the better results you'll get in the future. 
Um, and uh, this just shows you what a job page looks like. So if I clicked on the beer buyer specialist position, you can see some information about the employer. You can see the recommended majors that you know, are a good fit for this job. And then a job description. And then also the apply button in the top right hand of the page. And um, sometimes you can apply for the jobs directly through after college, and sometimes it'll take you to an external site. But um, that's pretty much how it works. So it's pretty easy to use, and we hope that you'll check it out. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sorry. So yeah, okay. Just one oh, one more thing. Yeah, one so, more thing. Go oh, ahead. Sorry. I just I had to include this slide. This is one of my favorite images from the internet because I feel like it incorporates everything that is amazing and awesome in the world. And this is what it feels like when you have a successful job and internship search. So I hope you'll all get to experience that feeling. And then finally, um, if you want to get in touch with me or anyone at After College, um, you know, we created a special page for you on the aftercollege.com, uh, sorry, the blog. Um, so it's bit.ly slash communications major. Please go to check that page out. We have tons of resources that are just for you that are all about what kinds of jobs uh, communications majors go into, about uh, you know, rocking your internship search and advice for really succeeding at your internship, as well as how to make the most out of your after college experience. So please definitely check out bit.ly slash communications major. And then you can also, you know, the blog is blog.aftercollege.com. If you want to email me, if you have any questions, blog at aftercollege.com will get to me. And then finally, you know, be sure to follow us on Twitter. Um, thank you. Okay. How about a hand for Melissa, everybody, from After Cup. So um, before we, we get to Nathan, how many of you, let's do a show of hands. Um, how many of you are in the undergraduate department? Undergrads, okay. How many of you are in the graduate department? Okay, just about even, okay. How many of you are in your senior year if you're in the undergrad, 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 senior year? So there's a, a group. How many of you are, have had internships? So there's a bunch. How many of you would like to have internships? Well, there you go. There's your answer right there. Okay, so please welcome now Nathan Parcells. He is the founder of Intern Match. Okay, Nathan, take it away. Hey, everybody. How are you all doing? Awesome. Um, well, yeah, I just wanted to start quickly and thank uh, John, Jan, and obviously all of you for being here today. Thanks so much for coming out. I know it's 7 o'clock uh, and it's in San Francisco, a lot of fun things to be doing, but you're here learning about jobs and internships, so a really good thing to go and do, and appreciate that. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, I'm really excited. I'd love to share just some actionable, helpful advice about how to break into a career and start finding something that maybe is meaningful to you. Um, quick backstory on me. I mean, I was, when I was graduating school in 2009, uh, I was gearing up to go into law school, and I had taken the LSATs, I would grueled over a choice of what law school I was going to and thought that was exactly what I was going to be doing, and then um, had this summer before going to law school, and uh, my friend was starting a company, and I thought I'd come out and help him out getting it off the ground, and so traveled out to Seattle with him, moved all of our stuff out there, and in the process fell in love with the marketing job that I did there in starting a company, going out. Uh, fundraising, uh, helping get initial students using our online internship platform. And so something that I think about always when I think about a career, especially as a career when you're young and still figuring out exactly what that even means, is that a lot of people use the term career path, but it's usually like this kind of career wobbly line that ends up being what's right for you. So one of the big, big roles of internships and in starting this whole process is that you get to figure out a lot more about what it is you want to do. And I can guarantee you that it'll be dramatically different from what potentially you already think it's going to be and what you really think you want to do. And so uh, key advice would just be go out and explore as much stuff as possible while you can and early on and really try to hone in on what it means to be uh, happily employed and what, what kind of places provide that for you. Uh, so, yeah, just wanted to share that story. And I guess is there a clicker here? Cool. So I think... Uh, some of the slides here are somewhat gloomy. They're kind of like painting the picture that there's like a tough job landscape out there. Uh, it's not meant to scare anyone here. I'm, I was listening earlier to some of the skills that you guys are learning here in your classes. Everything from 
Dreamweaver to social media to really practical skill sets. So have no doubt that you're being very, very well prepared for, um, for an excellent career and in internships. And I think it's fantastic that you're learning so many hard skills. I think that's one of the greatest things that you can go and do while you're in college is learn practical uh, skill sets that you can then go apply into internships and jobs. Uh, but this is just taking a brief look at, the, at what's kind of out there and maybe incentivizing you to think about why it matters so much to start looking for an internship. And I guess, I mean, right now we did the show of hands on who has had internships, but who here is looking for an internship now or in the near future? And who here is looking for, for jobs now or in the near future? Cool. Well, definitely hope that some of the stuff here helps in, th in that process. So, yeah. Um, I would say, I mean, the goal for an internship, right now, internships are the number one way to land into an entry-level job. Uh, most employers are in this state of mind where they want to sort of see what you have before they're willing to make a job offer. So it's a really a, a long-term interview. And beyond that, you get access to mentors, new people that can go help you in your job search. And so overall, uh, predominantly, internships are probably the number one way to break into the job market. Um, this is like the... the that scary slide that I was talking about before, but just there's high like student debt right now. I think we all feel that and know that. And so that's one of the big challenges with uh, why it's so important to start developing skill sets now and trying to get internship experience and start positioning yourself to be successful in the job market. Um, this is a really important statistic that we recently found in our 2014 State of the Internship Report. So we surveyed and got insights from over half a million students, and we found that um, there's a strong correlation between paid internships and getting jobs. There's a much, much weaker correlation between unpaid internships and getting jobs. So I think every student goes through that decision-making process of, you know, I have this seemingly great job offer or internship offer. It's unpaid. Should I take it? And there's definitely plenty of times when there's value in doing an unpaid internship, but it's not always the case, and our data speaks very highly to the fact that uh, you're significantly less likely to end up with a job having done lots of unpaid internships. It's a trend that we've seen, and so definitely if you're going to look into those types of roles, try to ask a lot of questions of an employer and figure out what you're going to learn there, what kind of projects you're going to be working on, and exactly what the value will be to you, because ultimately internships are meant to be educational and for, uh, to a certain degree and give you meaningful projects that you can work on, and all of you are developing skill sets that allow you to work on meaningful projects. So if you're gonna do something unpaid, which about half of all internships are unpaid, you should be very cautious about it because there's not a ton of data that shows that unpaid positions are highly correlated to uh, ending up with full-time jobs. Um, so the next thing, I guess, just briefly introducing our company. So I guess how many people here have heard of Intern Match before, or checked out the site, or, or been on it before? Decent, a few, okay, cool. Um, highly recommend it. So uh, our site now, so we're the largest platform for students looking for internships and entry-level jobs. We have about 30,000 employers, uh, including Facebook, and not Crone currently, so uh, hopefully in the future. But um, we're a platform where it makes it really easy to search and discover uh, different internships and jobs, and a big focus on helping you find positions that where you can understand the culture of the, position, uh, of the company. So we have videos, pictures, a lot of in-depth detail about what it's like to work there because there's a huge spectrum of types of business environments. And one of the biggest things that we found and that I found when I was in internships was that you know, the type of people I worked with really impacted what it was like to work there, why if I woke up every morning feeling really excited about working at a particular company. And so that's something that we really hone in on with our platform. Obviously, it's free for students, tons of resources and other tools for getting yourself job ready and able to find uh, interesting jobs and internships. Um, a lot of bigger technology companies like NetApp and Facebook, as I mentioned, Google, um, bigger other companies like Sprint, and then lots of nonprofits too. So we work with Donors Choose, Do Something. Uh, we have a, an interest in helping people bring their different skill sets, whether it's marketing, design, or social media, to... Uh, social impact companies as well. And um, a big thing that we've noticed, a trend that probably all of you have been uh, pushed towards uh, going to this school, is that right now, obviously, there's a big transition to online resources and a huge value in creating online profiles. So um, 
a big thing that you know the vast majority of employers will do before they interview or hire you is kind of search for you online. And so we highly recommend that you create a really strong online presence. If you're a designer, I'm sure you're tapped into sites like Dribbble or potentially building your own website. Um, but something I want to speak to that we specialize on at InternMatch is a on, build, helping you build online profiles that are discoverable by our community of employers. So we have over 30,000 employers who do tens of thousands of searches for students every month. And by creating a strong profile, you can get easily discovered. This is kind of a view of what an employer sees, and these are all Academy of Arts students who are on the site now uh, who have profiles. And this is a, a more in-depth profile, and then you can obviously link to um, your blog or other resources. And to kind of speak more to the like, highly practical side of what I would recommend doing any internship or job search, um, you know, if you don't have previous internship experience, it's really easy to go out there and build products or do projects that are, you can speak to in interviews. So uh, that's something that we really recommend to all students. Like, if you want to go into marketing or social media, start a Twitter account and see how many followers you can get, or start an Instagram account and see how many Instagram followers you can get that's not your personal one. Um, if you want to be a writer, start your own blog. And these are all things that, you know, there's, there's sort of that catch-22 of going and trying to get your first ever internship. How do you get experience before you have real-world experience? and projects uh, and doing, it's, you're, you're sort of now enabled with how the online world works to really build up a portfolio for yourself in a way that you never could before. So that's something that we highly recommend. And then obviously something that in our uh, online profiles we allow you to link to and allow employers to discover and be able to reach out to you about. So just a little tip there. And that's it on my end. Um, Love, love helping students figure out what they're trying to do with their internship and job search. Love giving practical advice and feedback on resumes or anything else about the internship process. So um, you can check out our website at internmatch.com or you can email me at nathan at internmatch.com and shoot me any questions you have and I'm happy to help field them. So thanks all. Thank you to David Parcell, Nathan Parcells, everybody. All right, next up, David Pham is a designer at Facebook. Maybe you can tell us your journey to get there and what advice would you give to our students here? David? Great. Um, well, thanks for having me here. Uh, it's been an honor to be here. And, um, well, my, my journey first started when I was in um, I was at San Jose State. I realized that uh, advertising was something that was really cool. Saw the commercials on TV really inspired me, and I thought that was the kind of stuff I wanted to do, movie posters. Um, got out of the school, and I realized that I wasn't a strong artist at all. I had really bad skill set, so looked into Canadian of Art, went to school here for my master's, and continued in art direction uh, in the advertising program. Uh, during my last year, uh, I talked to and networked and talked to um, a senior copywriter at TBWA in Dubai, he was also a AAU student, and we'd worked together on a lot of projects, and we were very, very good. So uh, he asked me if um, the ECD was also an AAU alum, if you wanted to come and intern. Um, halfway around the world, which was a very difficult decision, but I made it. Went there, uh, worked on Visa and some other pro projects. And it was a three-month internship, um, and at that point, I decided to come back after I finished and finished my degree. Uh, graduate and then find a job in the States. So I was, after that point, I'd had that internship on my resume, which was very, um, which was a really great thing. And, uh, you know, to speak to your point, Nathan, I, that was an unpaid internship, so that was part of the hard decision whether I should go for it or not. Um, but, you know, the, the agency is, is well respected in the community, so I knew that this would be a good opportunity for me. Um, moving forward, I found a, another internship, uh, this time paid in LA, so I decided to pack my bags and move and go to LA um, where I worked at an agency called RAP. I worked on uh, accounts like Nestle, Toyota, uh, doing a lot of their digital stuff. And uh, they're really great experience, you know, and I found the right creative director. He wasn't my boss when I first got there, but he was someone that I thought was really smart, witty, he had a lot of great skill set, and I latched on to him, and I had always bugged him for projects, um, projects that I was even on. And that got me a couple things and a couple projects to work on. 
and then I moved forward, and then I started work on bigger projects. And then next thing I know, I was owning projects as an intern, and then I got converted to a freelance art, junior art director at that point. I was there for about a year, so I did, you know, I wanted to, one of the things I didn't like about the agency side was how much control you had on a brand, right? The brand, the company sets the brand, they tell you that this is what it is, you work with that. Um, and I wanted to go on the other side of that and see how much I can influence. Um, so I went um, and I did a couple freelance for a couple in-house um, companies and then I got reached out by Facebook to be part of their global marketing, um, business marketing, which is basically the advertising side. Um, uh, it's B2B marketing, working with clients, the clients that I was familiar with in the ad ad advertising agency world. Um, and so, yeah, that, and that's how I got there. Now I've been at Facebook for about a year and a half. It's been a really, really great opportunity and uh, I've been growing my skill sets ever since then. I guess some of the advice I have for you, um, having been in your shoes, um, is to gauge when, when you should leave your internship or when, and what kind of internship you should go for. I think a lot of times we get a little bit of the desperation sets in. You're like, I'll take any job that comes forward and uh, I know we've all been there. Um, but also to figure out like what kind of investment that job's gonna be. And always, that job opportunity isn't always going to be where you live. And so you have to be comfortable of moving and going to where the job is as well. And then you have to assess whether that sort of risk is worth um, your, your, your career and your future. Um, because you, know, you go and you build that, that portion of your career, you can always come back. It doesn't have to be forever. You can, and I've left San Jose and I've left the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, and I always find myself gravitating back. Um, so nothing is forever. The other thing is that I think a lot of times uh, students may feel that they can't get a job or an, in, or an interview because they don't have enough work on their, on their portfolio. And the, the, the truth is you don't need a job to have a portfolio. You don't need clients to have projects. Um, you should always be working on projects. You should always be thinking of new ideas um, and working on new things. And part of that is like putting stuff on Dribbble, um, being a participant in the community. If you're an artist, DeviantArt is a great um, community as well. So put yourself out there. Continue to work on projects. Continue to improve your skills because um, that's what gets you the interview and that's what people look for is that craftsmanship. Great advice. Thank you to David, everybody. So David graduated from here, but also Candace is a graduate of our department. She got a master's degree just two years ago and launched herself uh, in the business. But I guess, Candace, tell us what you, tell, tell your fellow classmates, well, you know, the, you're an alum now, but what did you think when you were studying here? What did you think you would do? And what did what are you doing now that surprises you that you have this position? So, Candace. Um, thank you, Jan, and I'm so happy to be here again. This place was like my second home when I was a student here. Um, I ran into Jan at work one day. I wasn't expecting to see her, and you know, I was in the middle of doing stuff, putting things on the website, and I was telling her that um, before I got to where I was now, I wanted to be a video producer. I wanted to do like travel segments, more like lifestyle, and that's kind of where I saw myself. But after I graduated, I was in that like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? You know, I was kind of scared. I, I kind of didn't really know what to do. But um, thankfully, I got an email from Academy of Art back then saying that Cron was uh, looking for for people that they were starting this new digital channel, and if I would be interested. And I'd only been graduated for like two months, I was like, yeah, why not? You know, <laughs> I'll take a shot. So I, I applied and I interviewed and I got it. And so I started working on this digital channel and it involved uh, video editing and uh, some news writing and basically feeding this channel 24 hours a day. It also included a 5 a.m. shift, which I was like, ah, you know, that wasn't normal to me. I love sleeping in. So it was just a really big change, and I also never saw myself working in news. Um, so when I was in a news environment, I was like, ah, never say never, you never know. And it was very challenging, but at the time I was still kind of like, mm, I don't really know if this is you know, what I want to do. But the great thing about Cron is 
I got to work on the digital channel, but then I also got to work on the assignment desk and learn a lot about how, you know, news is picked and how reporters get assigned to things and, you know, taking calls and just a lot of interesting things. So I was learning so much and I really wasn't ready to leave. And then about almost a, a year in, a little less than a year in, they came up to me and they said that one of the, the web producers uh, needed to take a vacation and they needed someone to help in the web department if I would be interested. And I have never been interested in doing web stuff. Like, I remember taking class with Desmond, who I saw earlier, and oh, I, I struggled in that class. You know, it wasn't easy for me. And so I was like, no, web, I'll never do web. But they needed someone, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever, I'll do it for a week. You know, it'll be fine. So I ended up in the web department, and um, the, the lady who I was going to cover for was just, awesome like she kind of really took me under her wing and taught me how to you know do posts like I already kind of knew social media from school like I had all the basics you know and that's what school really helped me with but she really taught me on how to you know make a post and make people really want to engage with that post and just so much and so I started to really like the web department and my boss can kind of tell like that I was liking web department because he kind of knew that I was kind of there but I didn't really know where I wanted to go and as I started filling in more with the web, they slowly started taking me off the digital channel and into the website. And eventually, my, the web lady, she ended up leaving, and I ended up getting the job. So I am now a web producer, and I would have never, ever seen myself doing this two years ago. You know, m not even last year when I was in the middle of doing, working the digital channel. So I guess my advice is, you really never know where you're gonna end up. Like, try everything. Even if you really don't want to or you really don't like it, try it because you never know what you're gonna learn. Like, you're constantly learning different skill sets. And um, when my whole time at Cron, I've taken every experience as, oh, well, I can learn how to do this. So even when I started on web, I was like, oh, well, don't really wanna do web, but it'll teach me more web skills. And I mean, we, everything's online now. Like, if you don't have web skills, you've got to learn some web skills. Like, it's just how it is in this, <laughs> in this world these days. Um, so that's kind of how I was taking uh, my approach to things. Was, okay, I'll learn a little bit of this, I'll learn a little bit of that, and then once I started liking web, I was like, oh man, well now I just have this under my belt. And it's just been a great experience. So yeah, you, you just never know, and just keep trying. Sometimes um, things can be kind of hard, and you don't feel like you have all the skills, or you're as good as other people, but I think we're really hard on ourselves. Like even today, I, I get like sometimes. So I, I work weekends, but t uh, Wednesday is like my Monday, so I get like Tuesday blues, and I'm like, oh my god, how am I gonna do this? You know? And then I go into work, and it's just me, and I'm managing this whole website, all our social media pages. I have breaking news. I have reporters who want their story on the web, and so and so wants this, and I'm like, but I, I get it done, and I, it's like, oh my god, I did it. You know? So just you know, always challenge yourself and don't give up. Good job. Good job. We're proud of you, Candace. Way to go. Woo! And now, Julia. Julia graduated, how I many, two years ago? Last year. Oh, last year in the undergraduate department. And Julia, you can probably say, when, what did you think when you came to the school, what you thought you would do, and now what you're doing? Because I don't think that radio had any, radio did not cross your mind. So tell us your journey. Thank you. I thought so. That's better. So coming to Academy of Art, the only thing I wanted to do was play basketball. That's the only way I knew about Academy of Art, period. I got recruited here to play basketball for the teams. I believe our team was in our second year. No, our third year, I believe. I honestly did not know what I wanted to do. I did not realize my forte until about my junior year here at Academy of Art, still basketball was on my mind, but when I finally took Maddie's class, I believe it was, 250, that was his first year, releasing his calm radio class, and I was like, hey, I like talking. I like talking a lot. I like talking about stuff. I like talking trash about celebrities and discussing and debating. I think I could roll with this. And before you know it, I was always dropping in on Jan, 
on John Scott, on Maddie. Hey, I got an idea on this I want to do for a show. Um, what do you think about this? And I was just, you know, I was really loving it. Maddie offered me an internship, and John also helped me along the way. Jan gave me great advice about Alice for CBS Radio, who normally have summer internships, um, fall internships, winter internships. They need interns year-round. And they said, are you in for it? And I said, okay, sure. Um, finished basketball, I took my summer internship with Alice, and it's something I did not imagine to do in a million years. Jan, you was right. I came here, I just wanted to play basketball and survive school. I did not think I was gonna work for CBS Radio or want to pursue a career in radio. Nope. <laughs> um, the biggest thing for me and the biggest thing I feel that is very important when you are, even from the beginning, if you're interning and interviewing for an internship, because I definitely have to do that, show how hungry you are. Don't be too aggressive, but show that you're ready to take initiative and show that you're ready to take that extra step. For me, I treated every day of my internship like an actual job. I took it to heart. I took criticism, not personally, but I definitely used it to improve my next thing. I would, like, it was very crazy. I worked for the morning talk show Sarah and Vinny on 97.3. I don't know if any of you have heard them before. I see you were like, yay, I know that. So super crazy group, but they really, really challenge us. Sometimes we would have a two minute song on and they'll say, hey, um, Kim Kardashian finally released a picture of her baby Northwest. You got two minutes to find it. And we're searching the website like crazy. And you better find the picture she's looking for. Or, you know, there's a breaking story. We want information on it. Because the talk hosts are on air. All they can do is down air. They cannot leave the studio. So as interns, we have to find the stories they need. We have to provide the breaking news because things are happening around the clock. We have to log information, prepare podcasts, things that I never imagined that they would leave up to an intern that's straight out of college. Um, I'm very grateful that my passion and my drive was recognized because I was offered a job straight out of my internship. Um, I was also voted, nominated, and I won Bay Area's Best Intern for CBS Radio. And money. <laughs> money went along with it. Hey, that paid yeah. for my down payment on my first apartment. Yeah. It was a lot. Um, it was awesome, and now I work as a board operator for CBS Radio. What is a board operator? Pretty much when you're listening to the radio, there is someone working the music, working it on air, round the clock. You cannot leave the studio for more than 12 minutes because that's all you hear. It's dead air. Um, if there's not a, jo a speaking jock on air, jock on air, there's a board operator on air. And I am one of the few board operators. I believe there's about only four of us for Alice. And I am one of the four board operators for 97.3 Alice Radio. Meaning I play the songs that you hear. I play how loud it is, how low it is. I control the transitions from one song to the next. I also make sure that the commercials that companies buy out for spots are played on time. Morning talk show um, for Sarah and Vinny. I sometimes work the early morning shift and I set up for their show. I mean, yes, I'm a board operator, but also have to make sure that the next DJ that's coming on to run their show, everything's prepared. I have to make sure that the board is right, the levels are right, make sure that their information is correct, the commercials are checked off. It's a lot of work. Um, I have to make sure that the person before me takes care of me and I have to make sure that the person coming on after me, I take care of them. Biggest thing, everything you learn, definitely, definitely take it to heart. Definitely use it, you never know, because I did not expect this at all, not in the least bit. I remember when I first met Jan, she, she didn't like me, y'all. <laughs> well, she kind of did, but I remember I was sitting in class. I was in Com 401, or 104. It was 104, and I was wearing my basketball sweats, and I was kind of chilling. We had 4 a.m. practice, and I was dead tired. And Jan said, hey, you know, I'm Jan Yanahiro. I'm here to welcome you to comm department. And she looked at me and said, that is not how you dress for class. And I said, okay. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how I met Jan. And after that, it was a beautiful relationship. Um, it really was. She was like, okay, there goes Juju. And then I started dressing up and she started loving me a little bit more. Yes. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
a little bit off track, but yes, I work for CBS Radio, and it's a job that I love. Yes, it is my first job straight out of my internship. I may move forward. I would love to move forward. Definitely the biggest thing for me, I may sometimes just play music. Sometimes I run contests. And just giving away those two pairs of tickets to call in number nine and hearing them scream, lose their mind, and act a fool on the phone, it is the best feeling ever. I don't regret it. I love it. I know there's been quite a bit of talk about unpaid internships and getting a job out of unpaid internships. Whether it's paid or unpaid, to me the biggest thing is are you willing to put in the drive for it? Are you willing to work for it? Is your heart in it? As long as your heart is in it, you will be perfectly fine. You will get to exactly where you need to be because I did not expect it at all and I know you guys will be very surprised. Right. So that is all. All right, Julia. Woohoo! So uh, we promised uh, we've got 10 minutes of your questions to our panelists because we want to end at 8. So I would love to ask you to stand up, shout it out to any panelists and what question you would ask. So any question you would like, please jump up. Yes, right here. Stand up. Um, do you need any code experience uh, or what code do I know? How, what programming skills do I have for working at Facebook? So that's actually a very interesting question because I, um, I know little to none coding. <laughs> So a lot of what I do uh, inside marketing design is, um, is a lot what you would see inside um, a lot of the advertising agencies. It's a lot of um, doing design for events, design for marketing materials. Um, most of my time is spent in InDesign, Illustrator, and Photoshop. I do work with developers who are full-time coders. Um, if we we're building uh, landing sites, um, or web pages, um, we work very closely with them. Okay. You do need to understand HTML, you do need to understand how to work CSS, and you need to understand how it works. Um, but for my particular role, I don't know any. That said, there are product designers and there are other types of designers at Facebook who do um, no know code. HTML5, CSS, yeah. JavaScript, and the works. Okay, um, other questions, yes. The number one important thing is to have a portfolio we can actually navigate. I think that's the number one thing that deters a lot of portfolios from getting close. It's that we get to it, there's this fancy animation, there's this really artistic layout, and I'm 30 seconds in and I still haven't seen one piece. Um, and that's really challenging because we're looking at 200 portfolios, we don't really have time to um, figure out what it is that we're looking at, and that and oftentimes can be the, the, the issue. So um, there are really great resources like Cargo Collective, Squarespace, uh, who, which makes really straightforward portfolios. Remember, your portfolio is not your artwork or your piece. That's just the, the median. The medium, your, you know, your projects are what you're showing off, okay. and that should come through immediately. All right. Other questions in the audience? Back here. Good question. Okay, Melissa, go first. Um, sure. I would say that ideally, you know, it's great to start with your internship experience as soon as possible. So if it is feasible for you to take an internship while you're still a student, that's great because um, a lot of internships, um, you know, as Nathan mentioned, are unpaid and that's going to be really difficult to handle financially once you're graduated and the, you know, student loan payments kick in and all of that. Um, and also because the more internship experience you have, the better idea you get of what you want to do, and that will improve your job search you know, from then on. So if it is possible while you're still a student, that's great. Sure. Okay, David, um, Nathan, your thoughts about internship? Yeah, definitely you want to try to get that first internship during school, your junior, your summer at the latest, so that you can then you know, keep in touch with those folks, network with any friends of the professionals that you work with, and turn those into potentially additional relationships that can turn into other jobs uh, getting out of school. And one little piece there, not only just during uh, in school, but also during school is a great time to get an internship. So um, a lot of employers struggle to hire interns during the fall and during the spring. And you can work for 10 to 15 hours a week um, helping out a company part-time if you have a little bit of extra time between classes. And that becomes an easy gateway into a summer internship that then can become a gateway into a full-time job after school. So that's one way to approach uh, getting that first internship that can be helpful. Great, Nathan. And Julie, you took your internship while you were in school. 
Yes, I took it within my juniors, my summer of my junior year in school. Um, it is definitely a good idea to intern while you're in school because while you're in school, one thing also, as you mentioned, it's kind of a challenge to take on an unpaid internship when you're done with school and you have financial responsibilities. You take it while you're in school. It's awesome because that gives you time to not only reach out and connect with your teachers here at the academy during your senior year or whatever year you're in, but also gives you more time to connect with other people, network, branch out. You never know where you could end up by the time you graduate. And may luck be on your side, you find the job that you need because of that internship you took during school. And the internships, by the way, for our department, we offer uh, units. You get three units per internship, so you get college credit. And in our department, you can do two internships, so that's six units that count. So just want to know. I uh, want you to know. You, you had a question. Yes, Dan. Uh, sure. So if you're international, an internship is actually a great way to start because it's hard for employers to, there's a cost associated with paying for a visa and helping negotiate or navigate the process of helping an international student get a full-time job. So during the course of an internship, you can really prove your value to the employer and, you know, build that relationship where they want to really work with you to get that process accomplished. Usually you can get a J-1 student visa uh, to work short term while you're a student. So I highly recommend if you're international, work and intern and try to use that to bridge the gap to a full-time job. So we've just got a couple minutes left and I want to introduce John Scott, but first, this is the wrap-up for our great panelists. Your best words of advice, and we're going to begin with Julia since you're the most recent graduate. Your best words of advice to your fellow students. When you get that internship, treat it like the, most, the, most, the best job in your life. Treat it like it's going to pay off everything because it will in the future, generally. If you really want to pursue that, please show your worth. Go hard. And like Nathaniel? Nathan. Nathan, I am so sorry. Nathan, like you said, um, you want to transition to work and you're an international student from France. Show your worth during your internship. Your boss will say, hey, he's who I want. I want him to stay. He's worth it. So I'm going to give him the job he needs. I'm going to work to make him stay more long term. Okay. Candace, your best words of advice. <laughs> Pay more attention in class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <Never>. you, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> you might need those skills later on. And then um, take every opportunity, uh, good or bad, whether you hate it or you love it, as a learning opportunity and really keep those skills. You never know when they might come in handy. Okay. Thank you. David. Um, make finding your job, your job, your nine to five job. Uh, you need to spend all that time either bettering your portfolio or looking online, making those custom, custom uh, cover letters and making your portfolio and your projects better. Okay, great. Nathan. Man, such good advice already. Um, I definitely agree that, you know, find the place that you're passionate about and that will show through to your employer. So if you love data, go work at a company that is also concerned with that. And, you know, that passion and, and focus into that field will be a characteristic that allows you to bond with your employees, do a better job, come in, work harder. It'll get you more excited and it'll lead to you being the perfect employee and getting hired. So bring enthusiasm, work at places you care about, find the culture that's right for you. Okay. Uh, that's what I recommend. Great. Okay, and Melissa, last words from you. Yes. Um, be curious and don't be afraid to reach out to people. Um, it's amazing if you just, you know, find a company that you like or a writer or, you know, someone who's in a field that you're interested in. Don't be afraid to send them a tweet or, you know, if they have their email listed on their blog, reach out to them because a lot of times you'll be surprised by how willing people are to help you. And, you know, if you can go and do a job shadowing with them for an hour or two or maybe just meet them for coffee and ask them questions and do an informational interview. So don't be afraid to just be curious about, you know, all of the different opportunities that are out there and reach out to people and pursue them. Okay, great. So Melissa, Nathan, David, Candace, and Julia, thank you so much. How about a round of applause? Thank you. And they will be here to answer some of your questions for a few minutes after we adjourn, but I want to bring upon 
Uh, John Scott. John Scott, as you know, is our online coordinator, instructor, and career manager. He has put together a list of every single one of our graduates and where they are today. So please welcome John Scott. Hi. So now we've heard about how it works. But here's the first question that you're going to get asked in the job interview or the internship interview. So, hi, tell me a little bit about yourself. Most job interviews are blown in the first 60 seconds because nobody knows the answer to that. What I'll help you do is I'll help you tell the story of you. It's unique, it's special, there's nobody else like you. How do we present ourselves to employers by creating a narrative about what we've done up to this point? That's the one thing I can help you with. I'll see you in my office soon. <laughs> Link to and, you. And LinkedIn. follow us because we tweet job posts there. We put it on our LinkedIn group. You should uh, follow us on these channels because there's lots of jobs floating around on there. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.